The last time the Nova Rise Cup Series hit the track, Eddie Johns nipped Shane Bliss by four one thousandths of a second to take the victory at Talladega. This week, we head to the Texas Motor Speedway, a 1.5 mile quad oval, which has received a positive response and has been the the semi-final race for the Nova Rise Cup Series since 2006. The big storyline heading into this weekend is that Chandler Blake was suspended for this race due to the fact that he was caught for reckless driving and causing an avoidable collision that happened on lap 31 when he got into the back of Logan Chin, spinning him across the track that also collected Todd Piper and Walter Euthan as well. Walter Euthan has also been suspended for for reckless driving because the Novar investigation says that Walter Euthan could have actually also avoided the wreck and if he actually tried to avoid the wreck and somehow still got involved, he would have only sliced the back end of the 26 instead of ramming it directly in the back. As Novar investigators had then revealed that the 20, that the 8 of Walter Euthan had directly rammed into the back of Todd Piper to in order for, for no apparent reason. And initially it was thought that Ease Racing kind of had a motive similar to um, Ease Racing. However, Chad LeBlanc had said that he was at fault for causing the wreck and he will take the suspension as most likely he will surrender most likely most of his 39 point lead going into the weekend. Walter Ethan, as a result will I believe was running I think 19th or 20th in the points and will most likely not f will fall out of the points as to make matters worse the teams could not find drivers and the 15 and the 8 had to be forced to withdraw from the entry list so when the qualifying races come around instead of the normal 12 qualifying their race in it'll be 14 racing their way in instead of the traditional 12. And now we'll head it over to Kendall Johnson for the race recap. Thank you, as Scott Johnson, car number 58, leads the field down to the green flag with, sh with his teammate Shirt Harden on his outside. Logan Chin, car number 72, on behind uh, Johnson, as looks like Johnson gets a good start over the 59 of Harden, as Logan Chin in the 72 is now gonna make a move onto the bottom of the 58. Thomas Lears in the 16 is also gonna try to make a move. And they're going to be three wide heading into turn number three. So car number 16 of Thomas Lures makes it three wide over Logan Chin. Shane Nargan already goes by. Sh Shane Harden in the 59 coming to the line to lead the first lap. It will be car number 16 of Thomas Lawyers with Eddie Johnson, car number 55, trailing right behind. Johns tries to make a move, but Lawyers gets a good enough run off of turn one and turn two to pull out to a decent size lead. As Thomas Lawyers has pull starts to try to pull away from the leaders. Eddie Johns will get by Logan Chin for the second spot and eventually will run down the 16 and would make the pass on car number and Eddie Johns, your Talladega winner, trying to be the first driver since Chad Blake in 2010 to go back to back wins as the 55 of Johns goes underneath the 16 of Thomas Lawyers and we got a new leader as number 55 Eddie Johns who won last week at Talladega is already getting a good start here at Texas leading early here with taking the lead from Thomas Lewis we would have our first caution come out lap number 11 Scott Johnson gets into the back of Max response that sends the 77 sliding down the track with him he gets hit by Blake Bottega but nobody else hits him so Max Rapon the second year, the third year driver is not having the best of luck so far CJ Gordon in car number 48 leading on the restart with Casey Lester car number 12 in second and I believe that Shane Nargan in third Jason Duke in fourth as CJ Gordon is trying to make a somewhat of a rally in the Rookie of the Year battle. However, the only problem is his Rookie of the Year rival is right now running a few cars behind him. That's Justin Clinkston in car number 24. Casey Lester in car number 12, who's had a string of bad luck in the past several races, is now going to try to make a charge for the lead, he, and it looks like he will, bringing Shane Nargan in car number 32 with him. Shane Nargan needs a good run in that number 32 car, and Jason Duke will need a lot of help in order for him to at least have a slim shot at winning the title as Nargan takes the lead away from Casey Lester. Nargan is getting a little bit of help here as the 32 is going to take the lead um, away from Lester and he's going to hang up, hold off Jason Duke for number 66 as the 32 is now starting to pull away from the field as Nargan he is leading, takes the lead, leads that lap and Scott Johnson's car 58 is now going to look for second under the 66 of Jason Duke. We will have our next caution, lap number 22. Logan Chin gets into Stephen Volk in the 29, and that sends Evan Brooks down for a slide. Somehow that brings out a caution, which didn't really need to be one since Evan Brooks never actually went sideways, and normally in that case, you the caution would come out. Thomas Lewis would have led on the restart. However, his engine blew up coming to the caution, actually coming to the restart, as there you see he blows up and actually merges down to the apron safely. And for some odd reason, they did not call the restart back. 
So as a result, Kyrie Youth in car number 57 will lead on this restart with James Hills Jr. car number 11 in second, Steve Vulcan the 29 in third, and Logan Chin the 72 in fourth as those two actually were the ones that made the caution come out and now they're running third and fourth, which that's kind of odd. As Kyrie Youth in car number 57, looks like Steve Vulcan car number 29 is already going to make a move under the 11 of James Hilton Jr. Wilson, who's had a dismal year so far in that number 11 car. However, he's making somewhat of a good showing of what he actually can do on the track without the results showing how bad his luck has been. As meanwhile, several laps later, Casey Uto in car number 19, who was a contender in a couple of later races in the season, takes the lead away from Kyrie Youth in car number 57. As even though that a late season surge will is practically done for the 19 of Casey Uto, having good runs in that number 19 can still be a possibility as as we see Casey Uto still having a good run here. Calvary that his, ch his chance of signing will come to a screeching halt as Shane Harden in car number 59 rallies from the back of the field after he pitted a little bit early on in the, I believe it was the first caution that where Max Rupon spun as the 59 of Harden actually pitted on, I believe, at that caution and now he's clawed his way back into the field as now he's going to retake the lead away from car number 19 of Casey Yuto. Jay on an Orient 01 is now going to try to charge their way in. As the 59 of Harden looks like Hananori is going to try to make a three wide for the lead. But Hananori tries to get the inside working. But Harden will get the better run off on the outside. And looks like Shane Harden in the 59 will retain the lead. As there you see Harden goes to the inside. As Harden was not the only card to actually be climbing his way from the back to the front. Shane Harden in the 32 was also one. I believe on the restart about 20 laps ago. Shane Nargan had actually climbed, went from 37th to about 4th where he's running right now, battling with Casey Littinger in car number 5. Casey Littinger, who's had a up and down season, has yet to win a race as actually Littinger came very close to winning at Indianapolis. However, his late charge fell short as he's had a decent couple of weeks. The only exception to that was at the Mossport where he was involved in an early wreck and fell out of the race because of that. As now... Car number five of Casey Uto, uh, of Casey Littinger, excuse me, is right now trying to run down the 32 of Shane Nargan, as Nargan has been one of the few uh, dominant cars of the entire season. However, his position in the championship is right now questionable. But right now, where he's running, he shouldn't really be a significant issue, as car number five of Casey Littinger is now going to try to make a charge on that number 32 of Shane Nargan, but can't really make a lane open. We would have green flag pit stops around lap 70 to 85 as Shane Harden hears Shane Harden pitting. And then once the pit cycle cycle through, Shane Harden would actually be still leading the race, but now he's following Casey Huto. Dan Roy actually fell back due to the, I believe, a slow stop by the 01. The 59 of Harden was leading the race. Casey Huto on car number 19. There's the gap as Harden actually, I believe, pulled away from the 19. However, the gap then shrunk again. And then here's where Dan Roy fell. She's right now about to fall to fifth to Scott Johnson, car number 58. As Shane Nargan, car number 32, is right now running in the third spot. As he's getting a little bit of issues with the 98 of Shane Clark III. The 32 of Nargan would try to go to the outside as he's almost held up by the 98. And not really too kind about that. I believe he gave the bird to Clark for doing that. However, Clark would get his own revenge as he turns in front of the 32. As that would bring out our next caution and our first since lap 21 on lap 109 as Clark just pulled in front of Nargan as Nargan was trying to go to the outside and then Clark just came up and just shut the door on him. Not sure why that was all about. Jane Harden had a slight of advantage when he led on the restart. Blake Vitangliana and Chris Devon, the 50 and the 06 are off the lead lap. Casey Hinto on car number 19 is the second place car as the 59 of Harden would get away from the pack as the 50 and the 06 would actually get into the way of the leaders as they would not Harden as they would not get by because Shane Clark III was involved in another wreck. This time, I believe he came up on Max on Mac Hamlin in the 28. It's Shane Clark III and then I keep on going as we thought everybody thought was going to go to the to an overtime period. However, the race restarted with one lap remaining as Shane Harden in car number 59 takes the green and white together. Chris Scott Johnson trying to make a desperate rally. He gets by the 06 of Chris Devon as now he's going to try to get a shot under the. Uh, 59 of Shane Harden. Jan Arnoy in the 01 is going to try to get under the 58, 
Johnson tries to get under the 50 of Pataglia. Even with that, he's probably not going to have enough. Shane Harden in the 59 is going to drive away to his third victory of the season here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Scott Johnson gets second, and Jake Killen gets fourth with Jan Arnori getting third. So Shane Harden takes the victory here at Texas Motor Speedway. He led a race high 56 of 120 laps in route to his third victory of the season. And I believe that makes him the first Novar driver in history to have a three, three win season in his first four seasons. I believe that's the first time in Novar history that's ever happened. Scott Johnson, car number 58, is in second. He was actually starting on the front row. And ironically, these two cars actually started on the front row and actually reversed the order as Harden started second while Johnson started on the pole. Jay and Honore, car number 01, comes from last to third spot as how many, I'm not sure how many times that Oak One car started in the last spot. Jake Carroll in car number 76 starts, finishes fourth in the number 76 Geico Ford. Casey Uto in car number 19 finishes fifth. Shane Nargan in car number 32 with a big nine. He led 11 laps to finish in the sixth spot. CJ Gordon in car number 48 uh, finishes seventh in the number 48 AT&T Chevrolet. Casey Lettinger in car number five finishes eighth for uh, DM Racing. Monster, and Co and Monster Energy. Uh, ninth is Jason Newton, car number 66. We're not sure if this is enough for him. The good news is that he did get a good finish. The bad news is that Jason Duke, he was he did not have enough points to make himself um, eligible for the championship coming to Columbia. So as a result, Jason Duke has been officially eliminated from title contention. And that means he will have to race his way into Columbia. And Jamie Scotty in car number 9 rounds out the top 10. And now let's take a look of the drivers that will be competing for the championship. And now leaving Texas, four drivers remain for the championship hunt. And now these are the four drivers that will be competing for the championship for Columbia. A 267 lap race, 400 miles to determine a champion. Chandler Blake will enter that race as the points leader. He has a he has a 17 point gap over Cody White in car number 22. Um, Chandler Blake has 529 points, Cody White has 512. Third is Todd Piper, who actually lost a spot to Cody White um, this weekend after White finished 18th, while Todd Piper finished 25th. Uh, Todd Piper is 21 points back in the number 26 National Guard Ford Fusion. And Shane Nargan is the only other car, also from Silver Green Racing, as Cody White is also a Silver Green Racing car. As Shane Nargan, he is 23 points back. All four of these drivers are eligible for for running in Colombia as they will not have to race in their ways in due to the fact that all of them are eligible for the championship. And just a little notes on each of them. If Chadler Blake does go for a championship win for car number 15, Chadler Blake is seeking his fifth title. Piper, Wyke, and Nargan are seeking their first. As Silver Green Racing, they are seeking their third team championship and their first since 2009. Chad Blake is looking for Ease Racing's second team championship in the last three years. And Blake's also looking for his second championship in the last three years. And Todd Piper is trying to get Piper Incorporation their first ever title. So, Columbia, it's going to be quite an interesting weekend to see all four of these battle out. And I believe my prediction will be Chad Blake walking away with the title. As now, let's get to the rest of the point standings drivers, 5 through 20. So Jason Duke, uh, he was five points short of, actually six points short of being in contention for the championship. He is 50 points back. Scott Johnson, car number 58, 55 points back in the uh, number 58, Momo One Racing Ford Fusion. Keith Hales, in car number 27, everyone, everyone thought that he was going to be a title contender, but faded, actually faded right around the middle of the season, never really was able to recover. Jay Anonori also... Um, fell back a little bit. Never could really recover because there were suspensions and DNQs at Camden and California. Casey Uto in car number 19 had a strong surge in the latter portion of the season, but what? But that surge was not enough for for him to get to title contention. Casey Lester could not recover from his downfall in the latter portion of the season. He will have to race his way into Columbia. Shane Harden in car number 59, despite getting his third win of the season, will not be looking for his first title. Shane Clark III in car number 98 will not be looking for his second title. Tony Wider in car number 35, 103 points back. 
He lost one spot, Logan Chen in car number 72. He has 14. Justin Klingston in car number 24. 15. Damon Scott in car number 18, who actually was, I believe, in the top eight at one point in the season. Actually, a couple of races ago, but has slipped badly. But he did gain a spot this week as Brandon Green in car number 30 fell three spots to 17th. Jamie Scott in car number 9. Uh, I believe also tried to make a surge, but it was a little bit too late for Carter Nevada to make a surge. One, Mark Mungillon, Carter number 20, actually had quite a car early on in the season. And Casey Linton turned Carter number 5, rounds out the top 20. And now, next week's race will be the big finale at Columbia Speedway in Columbia, South Carolina.